Thanks very much for coming. Uh, my name is David Litchfield. I currently work for NGS Software. Uh, that's about to end in about an hour's time, though. So this is my last gig as uh, NGS Software. Um, today, we're clearly going to be speaking about hacking Oracle 11G. Uh, we're going to be looking at a, a couple of new attacks um, that unfortunately haven't been patched yet, but Oracle have been informed. I was hoping they were going to be patched in uh, the July CPU, but we'll, we'll talk about that more in a minute. So the fundamental point behind this presentation is to ask the question, has Oracle's security posture changed over the past few years? Um, and you know, where does it stand today? So how easy is it, is it to hack Oracle 11G? Well, we'll see in a minute. It's quite easy, but it's harder, as we'll see in conclusion, than hacking, say, Oracle 10G Release 2. So we'll look at some comparisons. We'll also look at um, Oracle versus SQL Server 2005 and 2008 and see if there's any uh, conclusions that can be drawn as to security posture from there. And uh, we'll talk about the flaws, do a couple of demos, exploiting these flaws, showing you know, uh, what can happen in terms of ramifications, as stated there, complete ownage. And uh, discuss risk mitigation, because obviously giving you the problem without the solution is not uh, ideal, so we'll talk about that at the end. And then finally answer the question, has Oracle security posture actually changed? I take it, um, well, just a quick show of hands. Does anybody not know about my sort of fight with Oracle over the past few years? Any show of hands? Okay, that's quite, right. So Oracle and I have been bashing heads against each other for crumbs since Larry Allison said his uh, product was unbreakable. And I, I, I yeah, took a bit of umbrage uh, with that and decided to, to take a look at Oracle. Previous to that, my uh, work had been more in SQL Server. And so, yeah, it's like waving a red flag to a bull, I guess, saying your product's unbreakable. So, yeah, um, my relationship with Oracle publicly has not been uh, the best, let's say. Uh, at one point, I actually called for the CSO's resignation uh, on bug track because I think at the time, there were massive failures within Oracle. Uh, their patching was at at atrocious. Um, they would patch one thing um, and miss a bug two lines under the patch, you know, to, in, in the code. Or alternatively, they, their patch would prevent the exploit but not actually address the problem. So, for example, one of the proof of concepts I sent them had a, a space in it. You know, the SQL had a space in it. And so they checked the input to see if there was a space in the input and denied, uh, you know, the, the request if there was a space. But if there wasn't a space, it went through. Well, we don't need a space. We just go angle bracket, star, star, angle bracket, not angle bracket, uh, slash, rather, you know, and make a comment. So we don't actually need a space in, in the exploit. So with a simple modification of the exploit, you know, the, the patch is broken. Sometimes Oracle would take five years and 15 patches to attempt to fix one single issue. Well, that's a, a, a small exaggeration, not 15 patches. It was actually five patches. But still, it's a significant number. Um, you know, to, to fix one small thing, it, it took five patches in five years. And I think that's, that was atrocious, you know. So I'm, I'm going to reserve my judgment on whether Oracle has actually made any improvements, obviously, because that's the basis of this talk. So since Oracle 11G... Um, was, has, has been released. Uh, release 2 has since come out, um, and there are no um, security flaws in uh, 11G Release 2 which have been patched yet. There are flaws, obviously, because I'm waiting on some being fixed, and the flaws we'll be speaking about today affect Oracle 11G Release 2. But the only stats we have available, and stats are everything in this business, are for 11G Release 1. So it was released basically um, at the beginning of 2008, end of 2007, I can't remember which. But the first set of patches came out in, July, uh, in January 2008, and it patched one floor. Uh, the next CPU came out in the April, and you can see five floors were patched in 11G release one. And then so on, and up and down, and up and down. So since then, 48 have been acknowledged in Oracle's critical patches, patch updates. Some of these are critical, like the last one, uh, there, uh, the, you know, January 2010, the, on a CVSS score, that scored a whopping 10. In other words, complete compromise of the server. That's on a Windows system, on a Linux system, obviously, because Oracle does not run as, uh, a super, as the super user root, it runs as the Oracle user. It's not a complete compromise, uh, but, it, you know, as far as the database and the data is concerned, it, it, you know, it's, it's definitely a, an epic fail. Um, 
Some of these are for minor trivial issues, you know, barely warranting a score on CVSS. So, for example, one of them was because the, with 11G, basically, you can uh, change the old uh, traditional password uh, mechanism to a new super-duper one using um, SHA-1 hashes. Uh, but if you do that, it's uh, impossible to track password history. So for things like PCR compliance, when you know, one of the, the points is to, to track password history, because they're using new SHA uh, hashes, you can't track password history. So they've had to modify the code to actually to fix that. So that barely warrants one of these squares, but the point is it's in the CPU, so it has to go in the square. There are a couple of missing boxes um, because it affected Oracle Enterprise Manager. So whilst you know, Enterprise Manager is installed, with the Oracle database server, I didn't include them there because I just wanted to actually look at the RDBMS itself. So how does that compare? Oh, sorry, yeah, before we go on, um, there's a big question as to whether Oracle silently flick, uh, flicks, fix flaws or not. And they do, okay? Bottom line is they do because I found them. They say they don't. I found them. Other people have found them. So let's get over this whole argument. Yes, Oracle silently fix flaws. And big deal. So what? You know, if they... If, if they didn't silently fix flaws, uh, fix flaws, these graphs would be through the roof, you know, and the, my slides aren't big enough to hold that. You know, it'd be like Al Gore when he gets on his wee crane and goes up and shows the, uh, the temperature differences with uh, carbon dioxide in the air and everything, you know. It, it literally would be through the roof. So I don't care if, if Oracle silently flick, fix flaws. I can't say that. Flicks flaws. Fix flaws. Um, so, for example, there is a buffer overflow in DBMS Java Test, which um, affected uh, 10G Release 2 and Release 1, and that was fixed in July 2007, but it also affected, God knows how it got into the code, but it also affected 11G Release 1. Uh, but their first patch basically fixed it, you know, but they didn't announce that, you know, this was being patched. But it's not a big deal as far as I'm concerned. So if we look at Oracle uh, 10G Release 2, this is how many bugs have been fixed uh, in their CPUs, you know, publicly acknowledged bugs. If we look at the first two years, 2006, 2007, for a comparison, we can see there's a vast improvement in 11G release one over there. So in the first nine quarters um, since 10G release two uh, was released, 73 flaws were fixed and acknowledged. Um, with 11G, 48 have been, you know, fixed in the first nine quarters. That represents um, a you know, a, a, a drop of 35%, which is actually really, you know, well done. When Microsoft turned around and compared bugs found in the first quarter or, or, or first year of XP versus Vista, I think the drop was about 35% as well. So that's within, you know, if, you know, industry norm, when, when we look at the world and ask the question, is, you know, is software getting more secure? Is, it, is its robustness, you know, improving? Uh, a drop of 35% between major revisions, I think, is, is a good, good hit, basically. So they've done really well on that. I also spoke about some of those flaws in, you know, that graph for Oracle 11G, some of them being for such pants issues as, you know, like password history tracking. It's not going to allow someone to own your system, but it's still on there. So the severity are also down for these things. There are far fewer SQL injection flaws in 11G release uh, one. They've done superbly well. They've, their, their tool, their flow, flow analysis tool, has done a great job of finding probably 99% of um, all SQL injection flaws in, in 11G release one. And I think that's really great. Buffer overflows, not so great. There's, there's still a, a couple of kicking around, but I tell you what, it's a damn sight better than previous versions of Oracle, especially like back in the Oracle 9 days and so on. You just had to look at Oracle to exploit a buffer overflow uh, in those days. Um, the fact that there are fewer high-risk critical flaws begs the question, is their toolkit, is their tool chest actually doing, you know, what's expected of it? There are still some areas where they need to improve, and we'll obviously uh, talk about that and why uh, these flaws are actually in there. This graph is for SQL Server 2005. That's been around for as long as 10G Release 2, and that's how many flaws have been fixed and found in uh, Microsoft SQL Server 2005. Just want to compare that with a product that's been around for a shorter amount of time. Um, so we can see SQL Server has done really, really well. The SQL team have done really, really well there. Now, people will say, ah, oh, but, you know, no one's obviously looking. 
It's Microsoft we're talking about.